Hey everybody, Matt here. Today we're going to start a series of videos about a 2D drawing program available for free on the internet called LibraCAD. To get a copy of LibraCAD, just go to LibraCAD.org and download the version for the operating system that you're running on your computer. There's a version for Apple's OS X, uh, obviously a version for Windows. I happen to be running Windows 10 on my laptop, so that's what I'm using. And there's a version for Linux. Just download the appropriate version for your computer and then install it just like under any other application and you'll be good to go. So when you first start up LibraCAD, this is what the screen looks like. This is the user interface. I'm running Windows, so you have the typical Windows menus at the top, file options, edit view, plugins, tools, widgets, drawings, and help. Along, and you also have some icons up here for commonly used functions. Along the side, you have a series of menus for different kinds of drawing commands. This is the menu for drawing lines, all different kinds of ways to draw lines. This is for circles, and so on. We'll be going through several of these during this series of tutorials. There is a dedicated help menu here. All of the help is available online. So quite a bit of written help is available. There's also a forum. Where you can place questions and get some help that way. You can also read through some of the other questions other people have had and uh, learn a little bit more about LibraCAD that way. All right, so you can see I've moved the keyboard and the mouse closer to the laptop and the extended screen. I just want to run through a couple of uh, commonly used keyboard presses and mouse clicks. These are the things that I use very frequently as I'm drawing with LibraCAD. Starting with the mouse, we're going to move the pointer over to the circle command. We're going to choose center radius. We're going to go up here and set the radius to 50. And there's a pretty good sized circle. I'm just going to mouse around until I find where I want to put it. And then left mouse click. I've just planted a big old circle. Move to the second spot. Let's say left mouse click again left mouse click again now I've got three circles still in the circle command I'm going to change the radius to say 30 left mouse click left mouse click got a couple of eyeballs there change the radius to 10 left mouse click left mouse click and so there I have the beginnings of some kind of goofy cartoon face to exit the circle command, we press the escape key. Escape key is right here. So watch the circle. Press escape. Now I'm no longer in the circle command. Let's talk about zooming. So I zoom in and out frequently using the scroll wheel. So with the mouse pointer roughly in the middle of what I've drawn, when I push the wheel away from me, I zoom in. I pull the wheel the other way toward me, I zoom out. One thing to keep in mind is where the image goes depends on where your mouse pointer is. So if I put my mouse pointer way over here, let's say a lower right hand area of the screen, and I zoom out, no problem, the drawing is still in view. When I start to zoom in though, it moves right off the screen. So what you want to do is move the mouse pointer 
roughly to the middle of what you've drawn. And that way you can keep it, you can zoom in and keep your drawing in view. Some other uh, thing to keep in mind also, and once you do this enough, you start to get some practice. You can actually kind of manipulate where the drawing goes based on zooming in and out after moving the mouse pointer. So it just takes a little bit of practice to kind of know where the drawing is going to go as you zoom in and out. Another way to move the drawing is by panning. So what I do is I press and hold the control button. There happens to be one here and there's one over here. For the sake of the camera I'll use this one. Press and hold this one down. Press the left mouse button down and hold it. And now I can move the drawing around or pan it. I can release and of course zoom back out. Control left click and I can pan. So zooming and panning is something that you use a lot. Okay, a couple other commands on the keyboard are Control Z and Control Y. The Control key is here, Z key is here, Y key is here. Press and hold the Control key, tap the Z key. Every time I tap it, it undoes the last drawing command. Press and hold the Control key and tap the Y key. And this redoes the drawing commands that you just undid. So Control Z is undo, Control Y is redo. Escape is used to get out of whatever command you're currently in. The mouse scroll wheel is used for zooming in and out. And then Control left mouse click for panning. So with those basic uh, keyboard and mouse clicks, uh, we're ready to get started. So another thing you're going to want to do when you first start using LibreCAD is click on the Options menu and then the Current Drawing Preferences. And on the second tab over are going to be the Units tab. I'm drawing in inches, but there's a whole bunch of other choices here. Inches are appropriate for me. The format of my... Uh, Measurements are going to be in decimal format, but you can see that there's a number of other choices. And the precision, I'm going to go to three decimal places. That's more than accurate enough for the kinds of things I'm doing. For angles, I'm going to use the decimal degree format, but you can see that there's other choices as well. And for precision, I'm going to identify my angles to two decimal places. So really what that means is down here in the grid status, if I zoom in, so I'm pushing the scroll wheel away from me, manipulating the mouse pointer so that the origin stays more or less in the middle of my screen. I keep zooming in until I get my grid to read 0.1 slash 1. So what that means is each one of these small boxes, there's 10 of them, inside of one big box, each one of these small boxes represents one tenth of one inch or 0.1 inches. And each one of these big boxes represent one inch. So if I was to draw a rectangle, so if I go up to the line menu and I choose rectangle, and I'm also going to click on this button down here, which basically means snap to any grid point with my cursor. If I start at the origin, left mouse click and drag, just zoomed out a little bit. So there I'm, I've got a one inch by one inch square. If I go over one more big square and left mouse click again, hit escape to get out of the rectangle or the line drawing command. Now, if everything is set up and working correctly, 
when I print this rectangle out, it should be exactly one inch tall by two inches wide. So if I click the print preview button here, and I set the scale to one colon one, and I'm actually zooming out. There's my one piece of paper. There's my rectangle. So what I'm going to do now Zooming out, there's my piece of paper, my one rectangle. If I hit the print button, and I print, you can probably hear the printer running. Okay. So let me get my camera and I'll show you what just came off of the printer. So here's the piece of paper that just came off of the printer. If I zoom in, hopefully you can make out the rectangle that's there. And if I take my ruler and measure it, Sure enough, I get a one inch tall rectangle by a two inch wide rectangle. So I've just verified that I can indeed draw to scale on the screen and print it out on paper also to scale. So if I wanted to cut out a one inch by two inch wooden part. I could glue this template down onto a piece of wood, cut along the line, and all of a sudden I'd be left with a one inch by two inch wooden part. So that's a very simplistic um, example, but that gives you the sort of the general idea. So in this video I wanted to show you where you can get LibreCAD what the program looks like on your screen once you start running it. I wanted you to be aware of the common keyboard presses and mouse clicks that I do while I'm drawing with LibreCAD. I also wanted to introduce you to how you can set up the units that you're going to use for your drawings and also introduce you to the grid. And then lastly, I showed you a little test that I do now you can do if you like where I just drew a rectangle to scale on the screen and then went ahead and printed it to a piece of paper and then measured the printed rectangle to make sure that it indeed printed to scale the way I intended. In the next video we'll start using some of the drawing commands and explore what we can do with those.